Alright. Hello and welcome to another LAMP Bible Study. My name is James and your host and Bible reader for LAMP Bible Study. And I'm again, once again, excited. I'm always excited for a LAMP Bible Study every Tuesday and Thursday. And today is no exception. And I know last time we had a fantastic LAMP Bible Study over the book of Ruth. And so um, we went through the whole book, even though Ruth has a lot in it. So I encourage you, I encourage you to go and read it again or listen to the Lamp Bible study again um, and break it down. You can break it, definitely break it down more. And I'll go definitely go over the book of Ruth again, <laughs> you know, because there's a lot there. And we learn at the end that Ruth was in the lineage of King David who King David is in the lineage of our Lord and Savior Jesus. So there's quite a bit there, including uh, more about Naomi, more about Boaz, and just that whole, all the relationships and just how the Lord was working through each and every, each and every person throughout the book of Ruth. <clears throat> so today we're moving on to the book of First Samuel. And so... Um, I'm reading from a collegiate NIV Bible, and of course I will be going over different translations, but currently we are reading the NIV uh, version. So um, when it comes to thoughts, um, just praising the Lord, praising the Lord, that popped into my head yesterday and it remains in my head today, praising and thanking the Lord for for all, for everything. So let's get started with today's land Bible study and First Samuel. The birth of Samuel. There was a certain man from um, Ramathame, a Zuphite, from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jer Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuph, an Ephraimite. Ephraimite. Uh, these these words, <laughs> these names and such, this is the Old Testament and such. So if you do know how to connect, correctly pronunciate all of these uh, words and or names, <laughs> please do so while we read along. If you um, know sh uh, little shortcuts or little, little tidbits and such, you can always leave them in the comments section. I'm very grateful. Um, let's continue to read. He had two wives. One was called Hannah. And the other, Peninnah. Peninnah Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had none. <clears throat> year after year, this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh, where Hophni and Phinehas, the two sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of meat to his wife, uh, Peninnah, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her, and the Lord had closed her womb. And because the Lord had closed her womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. When I, whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. Elkanah, her husband, would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? So, there's a lot here. <laughs> there's a lot here. So, Elkanah, he had two wives. That's the first thing. So... Where to begin? <laughs> we can go all the way back to Genesis. Uh, man created uh, man and woman. He created them because man. He uh, the Lord said, "Man is not good for man to be alone." So there was already a type of thing then in what would what you could look at is guidance for a relationship between two people. Well, in this case, you have Elkanah who has two wives, Pinnah and Hannah. So 
it may have been custom almost about this time to, <laughs> to have multiple wives even. <clears throat> In some places it was. So there was already potentially going to be issue. We, we've seen it time and time again, even with Jacob, Leah and uh, her and Rachel. We've seen it time and time again where there's, and please correct me if I'm wrong on any of these things, but we've seen it time and time again that there's issues when there's multiple people involved in, in a relationship. And so we can already see that there's issues between the two wives. It's, it's, a comp it's like a competition. Is that competition healthy for each person? I'm going to go with no, <laughs> you know? Um, and so it just, it's, it's one of those things where people sin and people do things. The Lord still utilizes everybody can't, and can utilize anybody, whoever he, he chooses. And he can make situations that are grim and he can utilize those too. So you have that, you have the two wives and you have this where Peninnah is uh, basically irritating, provoking, etc. Hannah on purpose because Hannah is a barren. And we see again, Elkanah loves Hannah more. So of course there's going to be even more so from Pena, Penina because of that lack of lack of true love. So um, we'll get to uh, song when we get to song the song. What love between two people is supposed to reflect, and how the Lord and how the Lord is in it, how the Lord, there's just a lot. <laughs> and so, um, and okay. So then we also know that, um, Elkanah would give Hannah a double portion of things because he loved her. And we also know that it says, and the Lord had closed her womb meaning that there was a reason, a particular reason. And it, it all has to do with God's timing and not ours. So um, bringing past to present, are there situations where, okay, so we, we, we still see, mm, situations where there's multiple people involved in relationships, whether they're um, married, so whether there's multiple people married together or whether there's several people involved in a relationship. And so when you see that, you can see competition happen. You can see things that are a little not necessarily guide it, not necessarily a good thing, um, it can end up being negative and it could be, so, uh, and things that fall out of, um, sh walking in the way. Um, so there's a lot here when it comes to relationships as well, as well as timing. We, we, <laughs> this is another thing, timing. You may want things, including a relationship, including intimacy, you, including to grow a family and such, but the timing may not be correct, correct. And there's always reasons for it. The situation, I mean, <laughs> I could go in depth with that. And I might, I, I might, one Bible study that may happen. Um, but it's, it's something that we don't necessarily control. We can try to control it. We can try to force things too. And when you force things, 
and you want it so bad, sometimes the Lord will go ahead and let you have it, let you have what you're requesting, not when he had originally planned for you. And we see time and time again that that does not lead to anything good. So what we want to do is be patient. Be patient, work on our patience, work on who, <laughs> who we who we feel because how we feel we are our emotions as well we don't want to get obsessed with something we don't want to get obsessed to the point where we're stepping out of bounds and forcing a situation we don't because it could be harming somebody else it could be harming ourselves it could be harming the person that you love and it could turn into a disaster because if you keep trying to force something, the Lord may just go ahead and let you have it. And it's not in his timing, but in your timing as you request it. So um, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind uh, when it comes to, you know, this is the Old Testament under the law, under certain types of, um, I I, I certainly believe at this time it was in certain communities um, having multiple partners, multiple wives was almost tradition in some instances. So what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? When I, when I read these, especially when I see that there's multiple people in a relationship, it's always super, there's a lot of drama. Unnecessary. Is that really real representation of love? I leave you with that question because we see it time and time again. And remember, the Lord has to, he, we think we developed that whole repeating path, process and learning. You know, you have learning cartoons you have learning videos and such and they repeat things to you over and over again we see this firsthand we can read it about it in in the bible in the holy word and see over and over and over again example after example after example after example and things still happen to this day so is that really my question to you is is that really, is, is this an example of love or is this an example of a teaching lesson? The whole Bible in itself is about love. And so you have different portions in it though that you can segment out and really also meditate and really go to the Lord. So pray about it, pray about that question. Let's continue to read. And because the Lord had closed her, I know I read that por this portion, but I'm going to read it again. And because the Lord had closed her womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. Elkanah, her husband, would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? Once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on a chair by the doorpost of the Lord's temple. In bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. And she made a vow saying, O Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servants, misery and remember me and not forget your servant but give her a son then i will give him to the lord for all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head as she kept on praying to the lord eli observed her mouth hannah was praying in her heart and her lips were moving but her voice was not heard eli thought she was drunk and said to her how long will you keep on getting drunk get rid of your wine So, quick pause. Traditionally speaking, during that time, 
it wasn't observed to like probably either prayer without moving your lips or praying praying and speaking out loud so when he saw her had her eyes you know probably possibly had her eyes closed and she was just you know with her mouth um speaking but not actually speaking he thought she was she was drunk and um he wasn't accustomed to seeing something like that do you can you think of something things like that that happen today I know I can. I see it all the time. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about Bluetooth calls. I'm talking about it. I do see where well, somebody's talking to themselves or such. And I myself, um, when I'm out in public, I may um, move my lips without speaking, especially if I'm praying, like before a meal or what have you, whatever it is. And I will be my head down and I will just be you know just going with my prayer and so uh, it's just something that was observed and and um and was caught you know and notated in the book of Samuel what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind how does it make you feel and what does it make you think let's continue to read not so, my lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Eli answered, go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. She said, may your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something and her face was no longer downcast early the next morning they arose and, and worshiped before the lord and then went back to their home at ramah elkanah lay with hannah his wife and the lord remembered her so in the course of time hannah conceived and gave birth to a son she named him samuel saying because i asked the lord for him so and that's what the title of this book is is for this is for samuel so now we know how Samuel was conceived. And we see that um, Hannah um, prayed. She gave her grievances to the Lord. And it says, uh, the Lord remembered her. And so she uh, lay with her husband and over the course, so in course of time, Hannah conceived. So in the course of time, Again, it could have been something as simple as this needed to happen. He needed to see Hannah humble herself and ask, ask him and not just force it. I mean, you can do the thing all day long. <laughs> you can. And nowadays we even have, a, you know, we know even more about scientifically speaking we know more about um, cycles and ovulation and what have you and so you can do it all day long but have you went to the lord i mean you may want to have a child have you went to the lord with it you know and that's a that's something and as simple as saying for hannah and it had to be in time so it wasn't Hannah's time it was the Lord's time the, it, this in time Hannah conceived the Lord remembered her in the course of time Hannah conceived and gave birth and she gave birth to a, a, a son that she named Samuel Samuel whom this book is going to be about there's an importance here so when when we are, are patient we do receive that award when we do ask our or give our grievance to the lord there is an answer there is progress there is hope and so there's quite a bit even just here that we um we just read um speaking over or and reading over these what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind 
How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Hannah dedicates Samuel. When the man Elkanah went up with all his family to offer the annual sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vow, Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, after the boy is weaned, I will take him and present him before the Lord and he will live there always. So remember, she had just said she had prayed to the Lord to have a son. And she said, if I have a son, I will dedicate him to the Lord. And so she understands what she what she requested she understands that god fulfilled it so she has to come she's now understanding her fulfillment that she has to come through on her side and that's point number two or three or four or five <laughs> when you ask the lord and you do bargain do you bargain when you do bargain, do you come through in your bargaining? I can <laughs> center a, uh, I, <laughs> what do they call it? What do they call it? Like uh, exhibit A, exhibit A, <laughs> center right here. Yes, I believe in Jesus. I have bargained with the Lord. Have I 100% came through with my end of the bargain? No. <laughs> and it's not, it's not, it's not because I didn't, it's not, how do I say this? It's not because it's, it's, it's just something that is something that I have to work on. I have, I myself have to work on, um, whether it's forgetting, whether it's moving on and moving, you know, like I did say that, um, whether it's not really wanting to, to fulfill, you know, it, that's a difficult thing. And it's not good. It's not good at all. The correct path is what Hannah is doing. She is fulfilling. So that's something that we all can work on and think about. H have you asked for something from the Lord? And then also have you bargained with the Lord for it? Lord Jesus, if you let this plane land safely, I definitely will go to uh, church this, this Sunday. And you forget to go. So when it comes to that, does the Lord already know that we're going to fail? Be pre, yes. <laughs> like, like that you could fail. Not that you will, because I've bargained and I have came through sol solidly like, yes, Lord, I am doing this because I said, if this, then this. And this is what we're doing today, or this is what we're doing. So there's just a lot. There's quite a bit here. And we have Hannah dedicating her son. This was her firstborn. So she was super happy. She was, you know, she was happy. She was one of those that wanted to conceive because, you know, we can, I feel that she wanted to. It may have been competition. There may have been a little bit of that. Um, um, do I really want to become a mother? However, she waited and she she humbled herself and asked whether she wanted to or not. She still asked, and she still is going through the fulfillment. She was gift, you know, she was given that blessing, and now she's fulfilling her end of the bargain. So there's just all kinds of things to look at here. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Do what seems best to you, Elkanah, her husband, told her. Stay here until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord make a good his word. So the woman stayed at home and nursed her son until she had weaned him. 
After he was weaned, she took the boy with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull, an epaph of flour, and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. When they had slaughtered the bull, they brought the boy to Eli, and she said to him, as surely as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me that what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life he will be given over to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord there. So she fulfilled what she had uh, requested and bargained for. And it may have been tough for her. However, she knew and she had faith she had faith and that just goes to show that how strong her faith was and ladies out there women girls it's many of times you have examples in the bible that sh shows men all the time um men there's examples of faith for men and women in the Bible throughout strong examples and so she had faith she had she had received the blessing and then she went through with her bargaining she gave her son to the Lord and you know Eli was probably amazed because he probably didn't know that what she was requesting because he had said you know I, I hope you know uh the Lord, I hope, or um, he said, go in peace. May the, may the God of Israel grant you what you uh, have asked of him. So he may not even, even have known. So now he, he might be like, wow, you know, this doesn't happen every day. <laughs> so um, that's, there's a lot here. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read Hannah's prayer. Then Hannah prayed and said, my heart rejoices in the Lord and the Lord. My horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies for I delight in your deliverance. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Do not keep talking so proudly or let your mouth speak such arrogance for the Lord is a God who knows and by him deeds are weighed. The bows of the warriors are broken, but those who stumble are armed with strength. Those who were full hire themselves out for food, but those who were hungry hunger no more. She who was barren has borne seven children, but she who has had many sons pines away. The Lord brings death and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and raises up. The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. He praises or he raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes and has them inherit a throne of honor. For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's. Upon them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his saints, but the wicked will be silenced in darkness. It is not by strength that one prevails. Those who oppose the Lord will be shattered. He will thunder against them from heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Then Elkanah went home to Ramah, but the boy ministered before the Lord under Eli the priest. So Hannah's prayer, very strong. And how it's said, you can take all kinds of stuff from it. You can take prophecies, you can take uh, everything. You can just help break it down. Um, as in where it says the, he raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes and, and has them inherit a throne of honor. Talking about people who believe, even if they are poor because even if you are poor or if you are meek or uh, meek and um, meager, you're, you are and you believe in the Lord, you believe in Jesus as your Savior, you will inherit a throne, you will inherit heaven, and you will be in paradise for eternity. 
So right now we're in just this brief puff of life and our soul goes on to eternity. She also, I mean, oh, there's just so much here. Uh, oh, also when things happen, when good things happen, rejoice, rejoice, claim, claim the victory, bless the Lord, humble yourself before the Lord and thank him for everything. Thank him for blessing you. Thank you. Thank him for being with you. Thank him for being your rock, um, your salvation, everything. Um, just thank him. Whenever you feel the Holy Spirit, Spirit, thank him. Thank him. Even if it's one of whatever time of day it is, thank him. What, you wake up. <laughs> you wake up in the middle of the night. You're like, God is good. The Lord is good and just and almighty. Thank you, Jesus. And just thank him. Um, when things go good, when things don't go good, still thank him. Thank him because he's there and he knows. No, he knows and you know that you have hope. He, um, the, it just, there's so much that Hannah's prayer goes over. Um, the Lord sends poverty and wealth. So the people who are not humble, the people who have it all, there's a lot, you know, we, especially today, it's really easy to see, especially in media, media, and you can see the different, uh, the different, um, layers of humanity. You can see the hierarchy, the people of wealth, the people who, um, have some wealth, the people who have little wealth, the people who have, who are, um, in the middle, the people who are, uh, poor, the people who are meager and weak, you can see each of those um, sections of humanity and it's very visible today. And so what then what a lot of people don't understand is when you're poor and you're in what when you're like myself and you see wealth and you see these people that have yachts and private planes and they jet set and do this and that and everything else. A lot of things that they have and need, they feel like they have everything. And so when it comes to that luxury, you have that humanistic comfort. And that's why it says in the Bible that it is harder for the rich man. And we'll get to that. That's in the New Testament. Um, for to get to heaven, be, uh, it's easier for a camel to go through a needle. I have a needle, <laughs> you know, <laughs> than for a rich person, because when you're when you're comforted, you start relying on that comfort, and when you are meager, poor, when you're humbled, you rely on the Lord. If you don't, now's, now's, now's your chance, now's your chance. Because even the rich person, even the wealthy, even the elite, they want and want and want, and they want that comfort and they want something. They want to fill that hole that's inside. Every single one of us wants the exact same thing. And that's because man does not live by bread alone. That's the answer. The, the answer is turning to the Lord. The answer is bring your life to the Lord, humbling yourself before the Lord and thanking him for your wealth, thanking him for your opportunities, thanking him. And if the Lord wants to work through you, allowing for the Holy Spirit, allowing for him to work through you, whatever that may be. So there's just quite a bit here, especially with Hannah's prayer. It goes, it just goes on and you can just talk uh, about each little portion here. Uh, so what kind of thoughts and feelings come to your mind over reading Hannah's, Hannah's prayer? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Eli's wicked sons. Mm. Eli's sons were wicked men. They had no regard for the Lord. Now it was the practice of the priests with the people that whenever anyone offered a sacrifice and while the meat was being boiled, the servant of the priest would come with a three-pronged fork in his hand. 
he would plunge it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot, and the priest would take for himself whatever the fork brought up. This is how they treated all the Israelites who came to Shiloh. Now, <laughs> previous land Bible studies, if you, if you haven't been in the previous Bible, land Bible studies since Exodus, no, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Genesis, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, you know, now we're in Samuel. Did, do you remember any portion where it said that the priest would, the, the person would come with their offering and the priest would put their prong into whatever they have brought them and take the first thing out of it? The, the best, the first thing, like as in the best. So remember, they would take of the, the best things from the Lord. It was offered to the Lord, and then they get to partake. There's, it's almost like they're standing at a door. You coming up to give your offering, and they're like, <laughs> "Let's see here." No, I don't like this. <laughs> or it doesn't. Mm. <laughs> Thoughts, feelings, what kind of thoughts, feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel? What does it make you think? Let's continue to read. <laughs> but even before the fat was burned, the servant of the priest would come and say to the man who was sacrificing, give the priest some meat to roast. He won't accept boiled meat from you, but only raw. Mm. They've already made practices and such that were nowhere near given in the directions but do we do those things do we past to present do we develop things that we think may have been or de from culture passed down may have started sometime think about like the game telephone <laughs> you know when you were little you spoke something or or maybe in school or college or whatever it happened. It could happen even today. You spoke something to somebody, like a direction. By the time it got to the person that needed to hear the message, it was completely different. Exhibit A. Or I mean B. We're on B, Exhibit B now. <laughs> so, so, you know, you have this learned thing, something that they are have changed, and you understand, we're starting to see why Eli's wicked sons, this is letting us know they're not thinking of the Lord during this time. Let's continue to read. If the man said to him, let the fat be burned up first and then take whatever you want, the servant would then answer, no, hand it over. If you don't, I'll take it by force. An offering, Bear, mind you. Mind you, it's an offering. <clears throat> the sin of the young men was very great in the Lord's sight, for they were treating the Lord's offering with contempt. Absolutely. But Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. Each year his mother made him a little robe and took it to him. Aww. When she went up with her husband to offer the annual sacrifice, that's so cute. <laughs> Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife, saying, May the Lord give you children by this woman to take the place of the one she prayed for and gave to the Lord. Aww. Then they would go home, and the Lord was gracious to Hannah. She conceived and gave birth to three sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord with his little cute outfits every year <laughs> as he grew. <laughs> I, I could only imagine. <laughs> Nowadays, it would be a big, like, taking pictures and everything. It probably was something. 
maybe drawings. Maybe they did drawings. I don't know. <laughs> you know, hand drawings or something. I don't know. <laughs> Let's continue to read. Now, Eli, who was very old, heard about everything his sons were doing to all Israel and how they slept with the women who served at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Hmm. So he said to them, why do you do such things? I hear from all the people about these wicked deeds of yours. No, my sons, it is not good report. It is not a good report that I hear spreading among the Lord's people. If a man sins against another man, God may mediate for him. But if a man sins against the Lord, who will intercede for him? His sons, however, did not listen to their father's rebuke, for it was the Lord's will to put them to death. And the boy Samuel continued to grow in stature, stature and in favor with the Lord and with men. So here goes Eli. He was trying to say something to his sons, but his sons ignored him. Hmm. Was Eli taking it far enough to rebuke his own sons? He was hearing these things and all he did was speak to them. Was this living by the law? Was this living by the rules? Or did he kind of have partiality because they were his sons? Do we do that? Do you do that? Do I do that? Do we show partiality? I do. <laughs> I can tell you now. I can tell you. It, it, there's something like a recent. That it, that's why it just came into my mind. I was just like, I, yeah. <clears throat> do I mean to? Do I want to? No. Do I? end up showing partiality or taking partiality, it's difficult when it comes to family. It is difficult because it's something that you don't want to see that person go through punishment. You want them to learn and understand and correct themselves. However, if they don't, and what kind of role are you, are we helping with when we don't allow for things or when we don't, when we guide and do what we can but just let happen what needs to happen um, whose growth are we stumping so it, it's those are difficult questions right think about it <clears throat> I don't like to show partiality at all but I know that I have I have I can't say that I have not <laughs> And I ask the Lord for forgiveness for it, too, because that's, it, it's not something that, it shows, it's, again, once again, shows over and over again in the Holy Word what happens when partiality is shown. It's not good. So give it to the Lord. And let the Lord deal with it. The battle is not yours, it is the Lord's. Amen. So what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind reading this portion? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Prophecy against the house of Eli. Now a man of God came to Eli and said to him, This is what the Lord says. Did I not certainly reveal myself to your father's house when they were in Egypt under Pharaoh? I chose your father out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to go up to my altar, to burn incense, and to wear an ipod in my presence. I also gave your father's house all the offerings made with fire by the Israelites. Why do you scorn my sacrifice and offering uh, that I prescribed by uh, prescribed for my dwelling? Why do you honor your sons more than me by fattening yourselves? On the choice parts of every offering made by my people Israel so remember these are Levites and they were not following guidance they had created their own rules and rituals and guide and their own things that to better themselves to to uh, for them not for God it was it had, they had took God out of the equation yes they were priests <laughs> And, and garb only, they had taken over the role of, of getting the best parts, the best parts of the meats. They were just, yeah, okay, it was going through a practice of, okay, well, we're going to just, I, I took what I wanted, I'll just burn the rest. That's what, I guess there's a, a God. 
did you could even think were they even fully of faith at that time there's a lot here let's continue to read Therefore, the Lord, the God of Israel, declares, I promise that your house and your father's house will minister before me forever. But now the Lord declares, far be it for me, those who honor me, I will honor, but those who despise me, I will disdain. The time is coming when I will cut short your strength and the strength of your father's house, so that there will not be an old man in your family line, and you will see distress in my dwelling. Although good will be done in Israel, in your family line, there will never be an old man. Every one of you that I do not cut off from my altar will be spared only to blind your eyes with tears and to grieve your heart, and all your descendants will die in the prime of life. And what happens to your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, will be a sign to you. They will both die on the same day. I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who will do according to what is in my heart and mind. I will firmly establish his house and he will minister before my anointed one always. Then everyone left in your family line will come and bow down before him for a piece of silver and a crust of bread and plead, appoint me to some priestly office so that I can have food to eat. Mm. So he's removing the blessing from his, this family line <clears throat> because like I just mentioned, I said, did Eli go far enough from rebuking his children? He just like verbally told them, but was he leading by example or was he just allowing them to do what they wanted to do or and just having too much trust and potentially faith in his sons to correct themselves. There's a lot of questions. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. The Lord calls Samuel. The boy Samuel minister, ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. That's not a good sign. This is, remember, um, so Book of Judges, this is around that time where each person did as they pleased. They were in the promised land. And so, as you can see, because everything was going good, they started doing what they wanted to do, and that didn't include the Lord. So now the Lord's word is rare. Let's continue to read. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. So the lamp of God, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. So they were, remember, that's the temple. So they were to have the lamp shine day and night. There was, the lamp was always on. And Bible study. <laughs> Let's continue. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. Or, and again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am. You called me. <laughs> My son Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not know, did not yet know the Lord, the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am. <laughs> you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. He has to, the Lord has to repeat. Get us to listen, listen. So now we know, say, speak, Lord. For your servant is listening. 
that's something for you that's something for myself you know you know when you know when you hear it when you feel it you know because you're at peace you also maybe a little full of different kinds of emotions when it does happen you know because in amaze in amazement and shock and and wonder and automatically humbled and you know it is God so you may have fear and that is just let's continue to read the Lord came and stood there calling as at the other times Samuel Samuel and that fear that's because it's it's God and that fear though gets washed away because that peace that overwhelming peace and love comes so it's humanistic it's humanistic for us to have those emotions and the Lord knows it and that's why he has to tell us do not fear he says that all the time he says that to people we've spoken through to all in the Bible and he says that to us now so think about it and okay the Lord the Lord came and stood there calling as at the other time Samuel Samuel then Samuel said speak for your sermon is listening and the Lord said to Samuel see I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears off of it tingle at that time I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end for I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about his sons made themselves contemptible and he failed to restrain them therefore I swore to the house of Eli the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering Samuel lay down until morning and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord he was afraid to tell Eli the vision but Eli called him and said Samuel my son Samuel answered here I am <laughs> what was it he said to you Eli asked do not hide it from me may God deal with you be it ever so severely if you hide from me anything he told you. This is kind of he was stern. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, He is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. Mm. <laughs> it's like Eli was like, oh boy, I'm getting I'm getting ready to get it. <laughs> <laughs> it shows that faith but also that like I don't know how to say like <laughs> what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind how does it make you feel and what does it make you think let's continue to read <laughs> the Lord's the Lord was with Samuel as he grew up and he let none of his words fall to the ground and all Israel from Dan to Beersheba recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh and there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. And Samuel's word came to all Israel. So Samuel was growing. He was having his relationship with the Lord, his walk with the Lord, and he was growing in the spirit. And it was so much so that people throughout the land were recognizing it when they were coming when they were visiting when they were hearing his words and such they weren't recognizing that the, the lord was with them and that the lord was utilizing and was speaking through them and so all of israel um, recognized him as a prophet of the lord and when you're walking in the way when, you, when we're following the Lord steps that can happen to us loving everyone love that's where it starts off love 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 the Lord love the Lord your God and then love thy neighbor as yourself and that's where it starts and when you are walking in love when you're walking in love that love radiates and people want to know because they think they they see you and they think that you have the answer because you do you do have the answer the answer is love love from the lord the lord uh our lord jesus his sacrifice to for us we you do know the answer and so you want to spread that love 
to each and every person, no matter what, no matter who they are, what they do, what they have done, no matter what, because we all sin, we all do things that are wrong. And we, every single person is due a chance with the Lord to, to live in eternity with the Lord. So no matter what, we are to love. And once we love, that love spreads and that person knows. So um, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. The Philistines capture the Ark. I think we're going to go over this um, again. Surprise. <laughs> now the Israelites went out. This is good. I love this. Uh, the Philistines capture the Ark. Now the Israelites went out. Um, I love the whole Bible, but this story is really good. <laughs> All of it is really good. It's just You'll see. <laughs> now the Israelites went out to fight against the Philistines. The Israelites uh, came to Ebenezer and the Philistines at Aphek. The Philistines uh, students deployed their forces to meet Israel. And as the battle spread, Israel was defeated by the Philistines, who killed about 4,000 of them on the battlefield. That's not good. But however, you see Eli and his sons, nobody, the Lord, the word, the word of the Lord was rare. They weren't living like the Lord lived with them. So they were handed over several times. Philistines, who killed about 4,000 of them on the battlefield. When the soldiers returned to camp, the elders of Israel asked, Why did the Lord bring defeat upon us today before the Philistines? <laughs> so the bad thing happened, and now they're like, why the Lord allowed this to happen? Remember, they weren't even given like doing all the sacrifices in them when then when they were, they had priests that were doing what they wanted to do and what they had made up. Hmm, wonder if that stuff happens today. So Okay, let's continue read. <laughs> Why did the Lord bring defeat upon us today before the Philistines? Let us bring the Ark of the Lord's Covenant from Shiloh so that it may go with us and save us from the hand of our enemies. Were they thinking about the physical thing or were they thinking about God? Let's continue to read. So the people sent men to Shiloh and they brought back the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord Almighty, who is enthroned between the cherubim and Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. Mm. were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. When the Ark of the Lord's Covenant came into the, into the camp, all Israel raised such a great shout that the ground shook. Hearing the uproar, the Philistines asked, what's all this shouting in the Hebrew camp? We just defeated them, right? <laughs> or routed them, right? You know, we hurt them pretty bad. Why are they all happy? <clears throat> When they learned that the Ark of the Lord had come into the camp, the Philistines were afraid. You know, that was a representation. And these are people who worship other gods and things. So they were like, oh, they brought their God, even though, you know, God <laughs> here with us now, you know, even now. Um, so, of course, they were, they were, you know, a little bit afraid. And this is what they said. Let's continue to read. A God has come into the camp, they said. We're in trouble. <laughs> Nothing like this has happened before. Woe to us. Who would deliver us from the hand of these mighty gods? They are the gods who struck the Egyptians with all kinds of plagues in the desert. Be strong, Philistines. Be men, or you will be subject to the Hebrews. <laughs> as they have been to you. Be men and fight. <laughs> this is just too funny. <laughs> I'm reading this and I'm just getting all kinds of like, wow. You know, they first they're saying gods, like there's multiple gods. No matter what, they're just... And then they're like, be strong. We're going to be strong. You know, they don't understand that their strength isn't their strength. It's an allowing 
the Lord's allowing them to rout Israel because it's a punishment. So let's continue to read. So the Philistines fought and the Israelites were defeated and every man fled to his tent. The slaughter was very great. Israel lost 30,000 foot soldiers. Oof. The Ark of God was captured and Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas died. Hmm. They both died. Remember, God said they were going to die on the same day, right? Or the prophet said, to the, you know, God spoke out of the prophet. Hmm. Interesting. Came to light, huh? <clears throat> and were they... So they brought the ark, right? Remember before when they were routed, remember they had to go against this previous land Bible study. They went against their own tribe and the tri that tribe who who no longer current, had followed the Lord was rout, like routing them. What did Israel do? First, they were like, the Lord's with us. Then they, then they cried to the Lord. <clears throat> and the third time, they offered sacrifices. They humbled themselves. They did everything in line how they were supposed to do. So once again, we see Israel just grabbing the ark and saying, now we have our God. So were they treating the ark as God or, or was their faith there or was, were they humbled? Were they humbling themselves and doing what they needed to do? Obviously not. Obviously it was the first thing. They were just like, well, let me, let's go grab our God. <laughs> not recognizing that they're not like the Philistines. Uh, you know, <clears throat> they don't have, Philistines don't have a God. They, they have their made up whatevers. And the actual living God is with Israel, but they're not even, they're like, let's go get a representation. So they were routed. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Can we take things from past to present today? Absolutely when we're not walking in the way and we try to act and i've said this before in previous bible studies where we try to act like the lord is a genie in a bottle like we pray when we need something what was the saying i don't know easter christmas a ceo christmas easter only <laughs> My sister, she said that, and I'm pretty sure it's a saying, uh, Christ, Christmas and Easter only. So some people go on, go to services Christmas and Easter only. Those may, may, may be the only two times that they spin, but do they spin them? So we are here to love each other, right? So let's say that somebody that somebody that goes and has fellowship those two times do they have fellowship that's not for us to know that's for something for them to lord it's and how often so we would want to have um, fellowship with the lord all the time daily minute by minute and such and then sometimes you can get or some people can get to where they only they don't have much fellowship with the Lord is that something though for us as humans to judge that's a question to you a question to me when is it our role to judge each other's walk each person has their own walk with the Lord so it's not my walk that it's someone else to look at and say that's wrong or that's should be, you should need to be going this way or that way because it's wherever the Lord guides each and every one person. <clears throat> so that's those are things to think about. So is it okay to reference to somebody as in a correction? Um, when they're off. So let's say that someone who goes twice a year, they may have fellowship 
with the Lord and you don't know. So you could end up saying something to them and they could end up correcting you. Or, and, or they could be noticing how other people fellowship with the Lord and they may want to change how they fellowship with the Lord. And it may not be physical or it may not be something that people can meet, see, physically see. Lots of questions there and lots of things to think about. Always take those to the Lord. Um, meditate on them. Uh, meditate with the Lord on them. And read. Read the Holy Word. A lot there. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? Once again, how does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Death of Eli. That same day, a Benjamite ran from the battle line and went to Shiloh, his clothes torn and uh, dust on his head. When he arrived, there was Eli sitting on his chair by the side of the road, watching, because his heart feared for the ark of God. Hmm. He was in fear of, that, of the ark of God. When the man entered the town and told what had happened, the whole town sent up a cry. Eli heard the outcry and asked, what is the meaning of this uproar? The man hurried over to Eli, who was 98 years old and whose eyes were set so that he could not see. He told Eli, I have just come from the battle line. I fled from it this very day. Eli asked, what happened? My son. The man who brought the news replied, Israel fled before the Philistines and the army has suffered heavy losses. Also, your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas are dead and the Ark of God has been captured. When he mentioned the Ark of God, Eli fell backward off his chair by the side of the, of the gate. His neck was broken, and he died, for he was an old man and heavy. He had led Israel 40 years. So, remember, so Eli and his sons were taking from taken the best things and they had made them they had gorged themselves and so this is telling us that uh that he when he heard because he was nervous about that ark the ark going to the front lines and he heard that the ark had been captured he fell backward off his chair by the side of, his, of the gate, his neck was broken and he died for he was an old man and heavy. So, mm, that gluttony got to him. Mm -mm -mm. So, he hadn't done enough himself and to his sons to discipline. So, and what has happened has happened. The prophecy has came true. Eli has passed away. But he did lead for, uh, for 40 years. He led Israel for 40 years as a leader, not as a king, but as a leader. So um, let's, uh, let's continue to read. His daughter-in-law, the wife of Phineas, was pregnant and near the time of delivery when she heard the news that the Ark of God had been captured and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she went into labor and gave birth, but was overcome by her labor pains. As she was dying, Ooh, this horrible. <laughs> As she was dying, the woman attended her said, Don't despair. You have given birth to a son. But she did not respond or pay any attention. She named the boy Ichabod. <laughs> this is funny. Yeah, so Ichabod, it comes from the Bible. Something in my eye. <laughs> Ichabod, Ichabod, right? Ichabod Crane. <laughs> I always think of the hellish horseman in that story. And when I, when I read over this the first time, and it took me a while, like, I was like, she named the boy Ichabod, and just went, and, and then I was like, I was like, put two and two together. I'm like, Ichabod is actually a name from the Bible. <laughs> I was just thinking like it was just a name, a English name or what have you, and I was like, Ichabod comes from the Bible. This was years ago, you know, and I was just like, okay, you know. <laughs> But, you know, that's, that's mm. she named the boy Ichabod, saying the glory has departed from Israel because of the capture of the Ark of God and the deaths of her father-in-law and her husband. She said, the glory has departed from Israel for the Ark of God has been captured. So she was in 
remorse and despair and so she named her, bo her boy Ichabod and you know a lot of bad things were happening due to the fact that Israel had fall fallen away again not not following how they were supposed to be following just doing whatever so and and she ended up passing away in childbirth cuz remember nobody would be um, there wouldn't be long lines of, of this family anymore they would this mm, mm -mm. prophecies uh, uh, continuing what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. The Ark in Ashdod and Ekron. <clears throat> oh, darn it. We're not going to get to the, all of it. Okay. <laughs> the Ark, this is good. So it's a good place to leave off here in just a moment. But after the uh, Philistines had captured the Ark of God, they took it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. Then they carried the Ark into Dagon's temple and set it beside Dagon. Dagon is a god of like war, a, their, a Philistine's god, one of their gods. Um, but, and this is really, this is really good. That's gonna happen. Um, so they sent, they put, because you know, they defeated the Israel's god or gods, whatever, because they didn't know, they didn't care. <laughs> they won so they were like yeah not understanding that the lord allows for things to happen so they didn't understand they thought it was their own doing but let's continue to read um when the people of ashdod rose early the next day there was dagon fallen on his face on the ground before the ark of the lord they took Dagon and put him back in his place. But the following morning when they rose, there was Dagon fallen on his face on the ground before the Ark of the Lord. His head and hands had been broken off and were lying on the threshold. <laughs> Only his body remained. That is why to this day, neither the priest of Dagon nor any others who enter Dagon's temple at Ashdod step on the threshold. <laughs> you don't mess with God. <laughs> God. God's like, this is my representation. This is holy. And you people are trying. And you, and then you put <laughs> you put this thing, this, my, my holy piece in here. <laughs> Let me show you who's actual God, who's alive. <laughs> and so their God was humbled and face down, you know, because it was nothing. So he was just showing, he was proving a point. He was like, you didn't defeat me. <laughs> God was like, let me show you. Not, not only that, but the next morning... <laughs> <laughs> their God had broken limbs. <laughs> so they were like, <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> their faces. <laughs> Let's continue to read. The Lord's hand was heavy upon the people of Ashdod and its vicinity. He brought devastation upon them and afflicted them with tumors. Hmm. When the men of Ashdod saw what has happened, they said, the ark, of God, the ark of the God of Israel must not stay here with us because his hand is heavy upon us and upon Dagon, our God. So they called together all um, the rulers of the Philistines and asked them, what shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? They answered, have the ark of the God of Israel moved to Gath? So they moved the Ark of the God of Israel, but after they had moved it, the Lord's hand was against that city. Throwing it into a great panic, he afflicted the people of the city, both young and old, with an outbreak of tumors. So they sent the Ark of God to Ekron. As the Ark of God was entering Ekron, the people of Ekron cried out, They have brought the Ark of the God of Israel around to us to kill us and our people. So... <laughs> It's getting, it's being recognized now. So they called together all the rulers of the Philistine and said, 
Send the ark of the God of Israel away. Let it go back to its own place or it will kill us and our people. For, the, for death had filled the city with panic. God's hand was very heavy upon it. Those who did not die were afflicted with tumors and the outcry of the city went up to heaven. Because God knows. God knows and God hears. So the, we're going to see on the next Bible study what they do and what God allows for. Yes. Yes, he does. Yes, he will. He will be hum he will be respected. You will be humble. <laughs> let's just put it to you that way. So let's do a quick review. The birth of Samuel. We're in 1 Samuel. And so we had to get some background information. We talked about Elkanah and his two wives, Penah, Pen Peninnah and Hannah. Now Hannah was barren, but Elkanah, of course, loved her. We know that's a you know, it's happened before. One wife is loved, the other one's not so much. And then there's some teasing going on and what have you. And there's competition. And then there's some, and then of course Hannah prayed to the Lord and she kept her promise. She kept her bargaining. She prayed to the Lord. The Lord answered, heard her, let her conceive a son who is Samuel, who's going to be utilized, who we're going to learn more about through the book of Samuel. And Samuel was dedicated as she had requested part of her bargaining. We talked about that with us too. We talked about how there's a lot there when it comes to Hannah and her situation with her, um, with Penny, Penina, Pen, Pen, um, her, the other wife, <laughs> and how we talked about how all the way back in Genesis, when there's multiple people in a relationship, how there could be issues. <clears throat> Hannah's prayer. We talked about Hannah's prayer and how um, uh, how she how each piece, each part of her prayer could be broken down, even as much as prophecy. How she's saying that. Um, he will guard the feet of his saints, but the wicked will be silenced in darkness because overall we know that will happen. They'll be away from the Lord. People who do not believe will be away from the Lord for eternity. And that's why it's so important for each and every one of us that do believe and acknowledge to spread the words, to spread the love to each, because every single person deserves love. Every single person, no matter who they are, deserves love. And, and, and they have that decision. The Lord allows for them to have that decision. So we all have a decision. And it's it's something of importance though to show what love is because every single person has that seekness, that want, uh, they wanna fulfill that fulfillment. And the Lord is that fulfillment. Jesus is, our, is that fulfillment. And so it's, it's one of those things that you want to share the love. You want to share the love and you want to recognize love for yourself too. Ourselves, we want to recognize and we want to walk correctly. We want to walk and have our relationship with the Lord and walk in his ways correctly. And how to do that, these, there's, there's reading the Holy Word, praying, going to God with, the, um, with, our, with, with whatever it is. Um, and Hannah's prayer is precisely just one of those excellent things. Um, time and time again, the Lord uses men and women. And then we learned about Eli's wicked sons. And Eli's Levite. Levite and the tribe of Levites. And he has wicked sons that are just doing whatever they want to do. We discussed how, do we see that uh, those practices today? Absolutely. So we have examples. <clears throat> We also got a prophecy uh, against the house of Eli because of it. Um, and we knew that, and we see that Samuel was growing in the Lord. He was there. So he was witnessing those things. So uh, from a very young age, he was witnessing quite a bit of life. And so Samuel, though, was keeping his walk with the Lord. And we also know that the Lord called Samuel 
and Samuel didn't, even though he was there, he was uh, working in the house of the Lord, he may have not had a relationship, and now he's starting to have a relationship with the Lord, so much so that all of Israel took notice and, and, um, and gave and told and um, told each other that he was a prophet, that he was someone who the Lord utilized through his through Samuel's living, through his life, and how he loved, right? And so the Philistines, then we know that the Philistines came and they um, attacked Israel. Remember, the Philistines were people in Canaan that were not removed because Israel did not remove all the uh, Canaanites and the Philistines were inclu included. So now the Philistines have gained power again because Israel was not following in the Lord. And so the Lord allowed for the Philistines to rout Israel. And then not only that, but they captured the ark. They captured the ark. And, <laughs> and then so we got to understand that at this point, literally, they were just treating it as gods, like some, you know, once again, here we go, just whatever it is, you know, it's a God, maybe it's God, it's this, this thing is God, you know, it's an ark, it's, it's, his rep it's a representation. And so, and how um, before we get to what happened with the, with the Philistines, it gave us a, um, a fulfillment of the prophecy and how the prophecy was coming true about Eli and his sons. His sons both died on the same day. Then boom, Eli learns that the ark was captured and he fell back in his chair and died. And because he was old and old and heavy, old and heavy, because <laughs> they were they were taken. The fat, they were taking all the good stuff and and, and not giving the Lord his, his due. And then we have, um, and then it goes back to the Philistines had captured the ark and they had uh, started celebrating and put it in their temp in their temple, their, their own God's temple. <laughs> and God was like, I don't, oh yeah, let me show you who actually is God. I will humble your God. And that's what happened. He not only humbled it, but then he <laughs> decapitated it. <laughs> or removed some of its limbs <laughs> as a shock, you know. And 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 they suffered tumors, you know. They suffered um, issues. Uh, they had uh, things because of it, because of they didn't recognize God. And so now they're knowing that there is a living God. And uh, they're trying to fit in so much so that none of the cities want to hold hold this ark. And to the fact where all of the, the leaders have gotten together and they're like, well, let's just send this, this thing back because it must be a weapon. They're not even recognizing because they're so into their own religious practices, what, what have you. They're not even, they're, they're almost like walled off. And so to the living God in their minds. So there's a lot here over the, today's Lamb Bible study. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Once again, thank you so much for a wonderful, fantastic, blessed Lamb Bible study. I pray that it, the Holy Spirit is able to continue to work through this Lamb Bible study and, and you have questions, you have concerns, you have thoughts, aha moments, you know, um, what comes together, the light bulb comes on, the lamp comes on, um, understanding that we're here to spread the love, this, the information in the Holy Word, the gain of wisdom, us seeking wisdom together. Um, so thank you. I, I pray that we continue to seek the Lord's wisdom through his holy word together. Um, please, can, please continue to pray for me. I will always continue to pray for you. And uh, the Lamp Bible studies come out every Tuesdays and Thursdays, along with little highlights that are much shorter um, than um, the Lamp Bible studies themselves, as well as flashlights. Be on the lookout for those um, during, uh, at Lamp uh, Bible study on the YouTube page. There also is an Instagram page. You're always welcome to leave comments, questions, concerns. There's an email address as well on the YouTube page under the, uh, direction or, you know, uh, like if you have questions and such. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you very much once again. 
Um, wherever you are, that concludes today's Land Bible study. We'll continue through the book of Samuel. Um, again, if you have a chance to go back to book Ruth, listen to that or read through it again. Um, and we'll continue through the book of Samuel. Um, as always, wherever you are, have a blessed morning, a blessed day, a blessed afternoon, a blessed evening, a blessed night. God bless.